museum and got a taste of this, but I couldn't come to the uh, festival. So he gave me a copy of here. Here's that book, uh, Who's Who in Oz, which I've read all year. And, you know, I'm not uh, familiar, I hadn't been familiar with the other works of L. Frank Baum, and I was, you know, uh, blew my mind all these incredible things and I managed to work them into a song which is a little travelogue of Oz that's not uh, confined to the movie and it has um, talking goats, floating castles, let's see, silver mountains, uh, enchanted pearls, banjo trees, cheese growing on trees, uh, Anyway, you get the idea. It's a little travelogue called Lovely, Lovely Oz. It's an Oz book song, so I thought, what better group to appreciate that than the IWOC, right? <laughs> so, so singing uh, the songs tonight, uh, first we're going to introduce two singers for the first song. It's a fun song uh, that Steve wrote. Uh, please welcome to the stage Matthew Baum and Sidney Howard.
claim you have no brain. I don't believe you.
Ladies and gentlemen, Sydney Howard. If the launch our show tonight, we're going to bring us up to date. It is Oz is contemporarily, if there is such a word as possible, because last month the, the animated feature musical film Legends of Oz, Dorothy's Return, opened across the country. It was based on a book by the great-grandson of Frank Baum. He is here, along with his wife, also Ryan Jay, the nationally syndicated radio film critic and the film critic for the NBC affiliate in Ryan and Mai's hometown of, Ryan and Mai, hometown of Milwaukee. Uh, so without any further ado, to celebrate and talk the backstory and show some clips from the premiere of Legends of Oz, please welcome to the stage Roger and Charlene Baum and Ryan Jay. Now, um, I think I think it's fun to mention in the first place that Roger has written uh, well over a dozen books now, probably closer to two dozen books, carrying on his great-grandfather's tradition. But the very first book he wrote is the one on which uh, Legends of Oz was based, Dorothy of Oz, which was published in 1989. And I first met Roger because that was the year my first book on the 50th anniversary of the movie was published, and we ended up on the same sofa on the Today Show one morning, 25 years ago this August, facing Jane Pauling. And she just kind of stared back at us, and we stared at her, and that's how we passed five minutes. But uh, Now, the whole pattern of uh, Dorothy of Oz becoming a movie, obviously 25 years since publica from publication to screen, is a long time. But the basic story of how the movie was going to be put together, even that has been a long period. Because the, the property, I believe, was purchased uh, eight years ago, am I right? Seven, eight years ago? Oh, six. Oh, six. So eight years ago, yes. <laughs> and and um, how did that come about, Roger? Did they approach you, or did you have somebody selling the property for you? It was quite interesting, John. It was one of those happenstances. Uh, I was under contract with MGM, and the parents contract for six years. And uh, we were doing one of our book signings, which was uh, quite often. And uh, these, these uh, wonderful people came over and, uh, and wanted to know uh, about, about the book. And representing, uh, representing the Lion of Oz book, but I'd like to skip to the other one, which was uh, by the fact that, well, a friend of mine uh, said, you know, you ought to listen to this uh, beginning of this commercial uh, of this company called Alpine Pictures. And uh, Alpine Pictures had a uh, a little paragraph or two about one of Great Granddad's favorite paragraphs which you can find in The Lost Princess of Oz. And I was thinking back because, uh, you know, here's, here's a company in the film business that is, uh, you know, doing something like this. And I called them and, uh, and we got acquainted. Uh, one thing led to another. Initially, uh, things happened that uh, were, I would say, uh, neutral, more or less. We're, uh, we're not interested in doing any of us right now, but uh, thank you very much for calling about the way we've uh, introduced us in our promotion for our company. And then about three or four Months later, uh, Ryan Carroll, the president of the company, uh, gave me a call and said, you know, we are interested. <laughs> and here's uh, the story now. Of course, 89, uh, we're talking in a, a number of years. And of course, eventually you're tickled pink. But I didn't know too much about Alpine Pictures. And uh, did, a, did a little digging. And they are the largest uh, independent studio, but they are uh, 
And the Raymond said, no, I was there, I was fans working for him, and Ryan Carroll was an Oz fan. And the next thing you know, uh, we were off and running with this, and uh, it's taken, uh, oh, five long years to put it together. And uh, some wonderful cast members, Sherwin and Roll Off, uh, the, the work they put into this was uh, really magnificent when you consider all the things that go into Oz and all the feelings that are involved in Oz by the public. You have a wonderful mix of people, young and old. Some have grown up with it since they were just little guys and gals, and of course it's 113 years old now. And uh, so you're, what you're doing is you're entertaining people with, remember the, uh, should we say the old Oz or the old themes? And uh, from that point on, uh, uh, you're, now you're talking the new age, new music, a uh, little more upbeat, and so forth. And the one thing that you have to be careful about with Oz is being true to the theme, true to Oz, and true to its. Uh, to the great grandfather's uh, messages of love, heart, wisdom, and courage. And uh, with that, uh, I think I've rattled on a little bit too long as I usually do. <laughs> then I, I, as John knows, uh, John, I, I just get out of the way. I've learned that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, there's my. They can pull up there and there and continue, as you know. <laughs> well, I want you, you, we're going to toss it to Charlene in terms of the voice actors, and I, I would like to come back to the voice actors after they've seen uh, some of the premiere footage that Ryan has. Is there anything you can add to the production history? Do you think the people should know, Charlene, about that whole uh, six year process? Probably not. I mean, <laughs> you know, we, we thought, sure. It's gonna happen, mm -hmm. you know, and, and they would send us snippets of the of the screenplay, and and yeah, we're gonna call it Dorothy of Oz, and we kept on with that, and and uh, then we kind of saw Hollywood do what Hollywood does, and they kind of changed the story a little bit, and kind of had to go. It's okay. <laughs> the check cleared. <laughs> um, because the book, The Wizard of Oz, and the movie, The Wizard of Oz, are vastly different. Yes. So with that, we just move forward, and we are we are today. Well, Ryan, before we get into Ryan, um, by way of explanation, some of you who were here last night heard this. I've known Ryan since he was 10 years old as a fellow Oz fan. We met at an Oz Club convention in Zion, Illinois. And as he became, um, went through college and then moved to New York and became a professional producer and writer in the t television and film industry, um, we had more and more to talk about as being in that business. But the Oz thing was always the bond that connected us. And Ryan, when he has now relocated to Wisconsin, and as I said, is reviewing there nationally and locally on radio and television. It's been a very exciting year for him uh, because there have been three big Oz events. And I'll let you talk about that and then set up what you're going to show, if you would, please. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's, I'm super excited, obviously. Hold on. No, you're not on. No. I'm super excited again. I think I started please. by stuttering. Um, <laughs> Yeah, this, this is a great year and uh, so much going on for all Oz fans. And what I loved most about participating in the press and promotion of Legends of Oz, Dorothy of Oz, um, has been that everyone associated, obviously stemming from Baum family royalty here, and then moving into Ryan Carroll behind Alpine, now Summertime Entertainment that produced the film, and everyone else in Hollywood and through investors and producers of the film related to this book-to-screen adaptation, they're all Oz fans. Mm -hmm. 
And if, you, if you've seen the film or if you see the film again, take special notice of the end credits because there's something very unique in the end credits for this film that I've never seen in any other movie that I remember, which is families are listed. And you'll even see uh, later in the credits, production babies, which I assume in the eight years that since this book was optioned and bought for the screen, um, babies that were born among the families who invested in the film. And I had the privilege as press to meet many of them at the premiere party and the event in LA. Um, and they all are so passionate, like us, about Oz. And so, and believe in this film and, and delivered, I think, uh, in every way as a fan and as a critic. And uh, it's, you know, it's just been a lot of fun. And so, and so Brian, over the last uh, eight years has been lobbying to go to the premiere long before I ever had any reason to go to the premiere. He was going to go and try to cover this, and you were invited to do the junket and, and do it all. And Ryan has a regular website, ryanjreviews.com. He is also on television in Wisconsin. Uh, you can see his reviews and see his Oz enthusiasm across the boards. But introduce your clip, and we'll do that now, please. Okay, so, yeah, so this was at the premiere in L.A. Uh, of the film, and I got to talk to Roger and Charlene and the producers and some of the stars, so... Current, uh, make it more relevant. 
I'm a bit over the rainbow too on this one. Fun intended. Fun intended. No, it's been, it's been great. It's a, it's a magical movie and we really have to thank all the people, artists, actors, musicians that made it happen. I really hope people are touched by it. Was there anything intimidating uh, about approaching an Oz project? Oh, absolutely. You know, Wizard of Oz is so dear to so many people's hearts. I know when, as a kid, I, I watched it religiously every year and um, it was always such a thrill and so inspiring to me. So how do you do a respectful sequel to a thing that is revered by millions? And uh, I think we tried to acknowledge the original, but then do our own variation on it. Um, you know, designs of characters, the, the new characters that we bring into the fold. I think they have to be in the spirit of the original one. You are a really fabulous owl. Oh, you're very fine. I, uh, I usually hear I'm fine. Marshall Mallow, second in command of the garrison at Candy County. The Princess King of Dainty China Country. Personally, a uh, very meaningful story to me, the original Wizard of Oz book by L. Frank Baum. Uh, my Aunt Catherine gave me a copy for my eighth Christmas, which I still have. That story has always meant a lot to me. Searching for home, heart, smartness, and uh, am I loving enough? All those questions that that, that book uh, asks. And uh, so we wanted to do honor to that. You know, we have a very contemporary movie, a very contemporary cast. It's definitely a 21st century Oz. Um, but we didn't want to sass it up to the point where uh, people weren't familiar or comfortable with it. We tested this movie often and early, and one of the things about testing it, you get people's results, you get a real feeling, and there were some things that we added to this film that weren't in the original script, but the fans who we screened it for said, hey, we want this, we want this, and, and that's what we did. <laughs> in general, music plays such a key part in all of the projects that have been hits. Wicked, The Wizard of Oz, the music from The Wiz. How intimidating was it to approach an Oz project and write songs? It was so intimidating, I can't even tell you. I, the night before I began writing songs for this project, I watched a documentary called The Boys about the Sherman Brothers. And after it, I just was crying for half an hour saying, like, I do not want to be that person who duffs the song in another Wizard of Oz movie because no one has. I don't want to be the first guy, so there's a lot of pressure. How is it to see your music on a big screen in a film like this? Uh, it's it's incredible. You know, it's um, you know, especially the fact that there's an overture, um, which I think is quite rare in films. For a composer, it's kind of bliss, you know, to be the good. But at the same time, it's pressure because you you, know, you want to do a good job. And it's, the, over, uh, the the original Wizard of Oz had a pretty great overture. And the city must be. has been portrayed so iconically. How do you make the role your own? She's a little too spunky. Uh, she's got a little, you know, uh, toughness to her um, that I think, you know, is most important, you know, as, as being like the little, you know, hero of this film. This girl is one of the greatest heroes of all the Have you always been a big Wizard of Oz fan? Yes, I mean, when I was a kid. That was the tradition before, you know, anyone had DVDs. You would, once a year, the Wizard of Oz is on March. And you'd watch it, and, you know, it was, it was fantastic. There's always a sweet time in our living room when it was on TV. No matter what was going on in our room or in the family, everything stopped, and we went into this wonderful world of storytelling. And I think the Legends of Oz has that same capability and the same feeling. We've got to get through the Dorothy. 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 How soon can we see a sequel? All right, I don't know if I should say it or not, but maybe, uh, it's in the works already. Who's on your wish list for casting a sequel? Uh, I'm not going to say if we can back if we can. The sequel has some great new characters, but we haven't made any decisions on who can play them. We're still developing the characters, and there are, so we haven't defined them enough yet to look for the talent, but it's coming closer. Did you come back and do a sequel? Uh, boy, in a New York minute, or in an Emerald City minute, I guess I would, yeah. <laughs> What are some of the changes from your original book into this film that you actually approve of and you like? It does follow the book in the sense of a, a wide swath of, of the settings and so forth. And then they've added a more, they've added, managed to add more action to it. One thing, Ryan, we like to think that Frank, while Roger was writing Dorothy Abbas, was looking over his shoulder. And, and I know he 
Jesus here with us today. I, you can feel his presence. So we hope we do honor to his memory, as well as I couldn't be prouder of my husband and happier for him. How much would you like to 